Hi everyone, I thought I'd take a break from the videos I've been doing lately, which are introductions to different video, different cameras. Um, actually, after I finish this video, I'm going to do the intro for the KX video uh, pairing. But I wanted to show you guys a macro rig setup. Um, this is a macro that I've used. I'm going to show you a few photos at the end of this video that I actually captured with this macro rig. And uh, I will show you some, bit, some of the pictures I took with the K7 that I'm using to film this right now. Um, those will be in color, and also with one of my, with one of my Pentax K2 cameras and this rig, uh, those will be in black and white using film, and you'll get to see how effectively this rig works. And it's worth noting that um, the images you're going to see are not crops; I, they're not the very center of the image. They are f the frame. They, the, and what this rig is going to do is it's going to uh, allow mul um, macro magnification well beyond one to one. Uh, I have not been able to suitably come up with the exact magnification that it can provide, but it's a lot, and it can do it from 18 to 24 inches away, which is really nice. And the images you're going to see at the end of this video were taken from 18 to 20 inches away from the subject um, in both cases. So I think you will see that this is a pretty effective get up that I'm about to show you. So first you're going to need a lens. This is a standard 135 millimeter M42 mount. It's got a K, Pentax K adapter on that. I'm going to take that off. M42 lens. It's, oh, wide open it's at f2.8. So it's a pretty fast lens for this size and it helps a lot to have a fast lens because when you do a macro photograph you're only getting a small portion of the of the image circle which means you're going to lose a lot of light. It also helps to have a, a through the lens metering camera which any SLR is really going to be any modern SLR uh, is going to have that capability because you will um, need to have that accurate metering otherwise everything's going to be underexposed. Macro photography, photography was very very difficult back in the day before through the lens metering. This is a cobbled together macro rig. It's uh, an M42 to M42 Pentax macro 2, but the M42 on this end was missing so I put on a K-mount adapter. Uh, so that's why I'm using an M42 lens on the front and a K-mount camera on the back. If you have a camera system you like, Nikon, Canon, Pentax, Pentax is the best, um, don't leave comments otherwise please don't. Um, uh, then get a macro bellows that works with that chosen system. Nikon's macro bellows are fantastic, by the way, very expensive, but well, well worth it because some of them also come with tilt shift capability outside the scope of this video, but a very nice thing to have. So I'm going to mount the lens on the front of the macro bellows, and at, what the macro bellows does is that as the lens moves further away from the film focal plane, magnification increases on the film focal plane. So this is causing an increase. Theoretically, if I was about to take a picture, this would cause an increase in magnification. Um, and there's also co a correlation to distance from subject uh, as well, but uh, off the top of my head I can't remember what that is, so I'm just going to leave it at there's a correlation in there. I'm going to adjust this because I don't want it all out all the way because I want to be able to properly frame some of what we're going to do next. Now I'm going to mount it. This is a Pentax KX. You can use any camera for macro photography basically. There we go. Now there it is with the camera mounted. This macro bellows I really like because it's got a tripod a receptacle here and a tripod receptacle here. So it allows me to balance uh, on a tripod however I choose with the right tripod I could use my KX tripod receptacle but it doesn't really make any sense because all of the weight is forward. Right now if I were using a tripod I would put it on the forward receptacle because that's where the lens is and it's really it would allow me a little bit more pivoting ability. As I said previously when you're doing a macro photograph you use a lot of light, lose a lot of light because you use a smaller portion of the image cone so it helps to have a flash uh, so what I'm going to do next is put on the flash and show you how to prevent the harsh shadows with And as flash. I was saying, um, if you just put a flash on the back of the camera, like this, and this is a standard, um, standard flash 
you see these, you can get this this flash for like seven bucks on eBay. I actually happen to really like this flash. I've had it for like 20 years, and it's a great performer. Even if you were to put on a dispersion screen like this onto the flash, you will still get very, very harsh shadows on your subject and behind your subject with a flash like this. So for $1.99, including shipping, I kid you not, I bought this flash dispersion thing. And I leave the flash cover on the flash because this was a pretty cheap unit, so having the secondary cover provides better flash dispersion and provides a better result from the flash. Now, the nice thing is that this flash bends downwards to negative 7%. And that's nice because when it's raised up above the camera like this, it allows me to point the flash slightly downward. And with this dis dispersion diffusion screen, that's what I've been looking for this whole time. With the diffusion screen, it, it still points the, the light in the right direction, but provides a very diffuse flash. Okay, So here is the whole rig. Diffusion, flash, camera, macro bellows, lens, and it's pretty simple. This whole setup, uh, well, this lens is re usually runs for about 25 bucks on eBay, I think, maybe a little bit less, um, but totally worth it. This bellows cost me 19 because uh, it was broken. Normally, without it being broken, a, a brand new off brand um, K mount macro bellows runs about $40. Um, off-brand for Nikon and Canon I think is a little bit more than that. Uh, however much a camera is going to cost you, if it's digital, a digital cameras do work very well with, with the right macro get up. Um, flash, you can get these for free or next to free, but uh, a good flash will cost you a few bucks, let's call it 10, 10, 20 bucks, and two for this, it's negligible. Give or take, you can do this whole setup for uh, somewhere in the range of 65 to 100 bucks on the cheap. If you're patient and don't have to have it right now and wait and wait and you, and you can wait three to six months, you can probably get it for half that, maybe, uh, maybe a little bit more than half that. So uh, now stay tuned for a few seconds and what we're going to do is uh, take a look at some of the um, photos I've taken with this exact setup. And also, if this video is helpful to you, is useful, and if you uh, please please uh, subscribe to my channel, please like this video, and also uh, if you have a similar similar or different macro setup and some photos to share, please post a video response with, uh, with, with your work. I would love to learn how you guys do uh, macro photography and what your, your setups are like.